Hello and welcome. My name is Charlie Roscoe and I'm here to discover if you can play iRacing on a controller. So it's a question I have actually seen asked quite a lot over the last year or two. And I suspect that's because uh, a lot of people who are out there playing Gran Turismo Sport or Forza 7 uh, or whatever your poison may be, you're jumping onto YouTube and you're seeing the people that you follow um, do lots of iRacing stuff, do lots of endurance races and you think, I'd like to get in on that, I'd like to have a crack. I don't have a steering wheel though, is that going to be a barrier for entry? And the first thing I suppose you've got to do is figure out if your PC can actually handle iRacing or not. Uh, and it's actually fairly easy to do. So if I go to Google and just type in, uh, can my PC run iRacing? On the actual iRacing website itself, you can go to system requirements here, it's the top one. Uh, scroll your way down and it gives you some recommended sort of settings. But in the middle, can my system run iRacing? Let's find out. This is going to be the first question because if your PC can't, I'll click on check my system there, if your PC can't run it, then uh, it's irrelevant. If you want to use a microwave as an input setting, you're not going to be able to do it. So we'll open up this detection.exe and it's just having a bit of a look and it should tell us. Uh, now hopefully, given that this is the PC I actually run iRacing off, uh, this will come back with a big affirmative. Okay, so you can see it's all done there. It's exiting out. We will wait for the answer, and you can see I am reaching a pass mark. Now, it's not uh, it's not perfect. Look, my PC runs it fine. I only typically run it at um, 1080p, and you know my settings are relatively good. You guys, uh, some of you guys will have seen my channel before. You will have seen my streams. It gets the job done fine. Uh, it's certainly a pass mark, and I do need a PC upgrade. That's uh, coming up at some point. But let's. I'm going to go ahead at this point and assume that you uh, also got a pass mark. So you know your PC or your laptop or whatever it is that you'd like to try iRacing out on um, is able to do it. So when it comes to controllers, I have a couple of choices. Um, I think an Xbox One controller or something like that is going to be uh, a good and fairly obvious choice because, yeah, it's Microsoft product. The, the win Windows is going to pick it up straight away. It's going to recognize it. So minimal effort there. But I do also understand that a lot of the people that watch my content uh, are coming from Gran Turismo Sport. So I've got a PlayStation 5 controller here, which would probably be my preference. However, uh, I understand a lot of people out there are unable to get hold of PlayStation 5s. So I'm going to go back to Old Faithful, which is probably my least favorite controller to do racing games on in terms of the R1, uh, sorry, the L2 and R2 triggers, um, which I'll be using as throttle and brake. Now I'd suggest if you use the X button um, or yeah, if you use the X button as accelerator and use square as brake, it's probably going to be very difficult for you. That's even if iRacing actually um, accepts this as a peripheral. Uh, I think you're going to want to start practicing using the R2 and L2 as accelerator and throttle. Now, I haven't installed anything on my computer at all um, to make this controller run. I'm literally just going to plug it into my PC. Um, there's no third party apps or anything that's going to help detect it. I plugged it in. You can see Windows is setting up the device now. Uh, and once that's done, I'm going to load up iRacing. So I'm going to go ahead and pretend that you uh, have purchased a one month trial of iRacing, which is the only way you're going to do it. Bear in mind, you can't get access to iRacing without that. Um, and let's go and load up something that is basic, something that's going to work off the bat. Okay, so to test this out, I have just grabbed the MX-5 Cup car, which you're going to have uh, as one of the provided cars when you um, purchase a subscription to iRacing. Then I've gone for Lime Rock Park, which I'm pretty sure is also one that you get given for nothing. Uh, so this is sort of replicating an exact uh, example. But um, as I say, just, just bear in mind you do have to subscribe to, uh, to iRacing. So you're going to have to at least pay for a one month to try this out. Um, but we're going to jump in and see if this actually goes. Okay, so we have loaded up. I've got my PlayStation 4 controller plugged into the PC. I haven't, I think there is third party software you can get to actually make the, um, make it work through Bluetooth, through wirelessly. I haven't bothered doing that. I've just plugged it in. The light isn't on the controller. I don't know if that's a good or a bad sign. Um, but my steering wheel, I can confirm for those of you wondering, is not plugged in. I have unplugged that. So the PC has no idea what I've done. You can see I have to configure controls. Nothing has been automatically set up. Uh, so let me turn uh, the wheel fully one way, return it to the center. 
Yeah, so I've done that. Turn one way, turn left, return to center, and done. Um, I have to hold it 90 degrees to the left, so I probably want to go maybe just back from three quarters of the way, and hit done, and then return it to center and hit done. So the good news is you can see it's actually picking up this so far. Uh, depress the throttle and release it and then hit done. Then we're going to do the same for the brake. So that's L2 all the way in and release it. Done. Uh, and we're not going to calibrate to detect clutch because we don't want that. Um, clutter patch was not detected. Okay, so I want to actually use auto blip. Done. Okay, so sequential shift. Uh, now you guys use whatever you prefer. I'm going to use circle for upshift and hit done. And then I'm going to use square as downshift and hit done. Um, I do not have an H pattern I want to use. Uh, so you have to choose look left and right. So I'm actually just going to use, I don't even know, L1 to look left, R1 to look right. And uh, I'm going to use, geez, what do I use? I might use the share button to, uh, to enter the pits or repair tow. And done. So we have a steering wheel. Um, you can see the wheel range 214 degrees, which is which is probably fine. Now I've mapped it. It's going to take a little bit of tweaking to get this actually right. I'm excited so far that it's detecting the controller. I have steering wheel. I have brake and throttle, but you can see it's going to take a bit of a uh, yeah. I'm not that good on controller. It is worth bearing in mind at this point. I have not played any sort of decent racing games, only arcade races basically on a controller now for a very long time. So I'm going to be rubbish myself. You can see the shifters work as well. Um, Okay, so here we are in the car. Um, I have now got the audio fixed because I didn't have that on right before. I've got the PlayStation 4 controller plugged into the PC. Um, there's a little bit of, you can see the steering wheel work. So it, it, there's going to be some tweaking. You're probably going to have to set up a dead zone. And also if I pull it hard left, you can see I'm doing quite a bit of steering there. So uh, yeah, we're going to have to tweak it. That's for the next video. Nonetheless, let's put the pit limiter on. Let's use a bit of throttle. Select first and away we go. Here we go. So there is your, I'll take the pit limiter off. Oh, we're up to second. And I actually don't know Lime, Lime Rock Park very well. But as you can see, as I poorly drive my way through here, I am in fact playing iRacing with the controller. Okay, so we're back. This time I've grabbed my Xbox One controller, as some of you might have them lying around, or in fact just have an Xbox, not a PlayStation. Uh, now, I didn't do anything special. I literally just exited out of the lobby. Um, I unplugged my PlayStation 4 controller, and I just plugged this one straight back in. Uses the same cable, nice and easy. So let's go and jump back in. Right, so we are back in. I'm gonna have to configure those controls again, because obviously it's a different controller. So we're gonna do the same thing. Pit limiter is on, so we all look pretty good. Bit of throttle into first, and we, uh, there we go. You can see the steering's a bit touchy. But we are away. Now, of course, the thing with eye racing is you don't really want to go 100% throttle if you don't have to. Um, same with braking, because you do tend to lock it up a little bit. But these, these MX-5s are a really great way to learn. Um, this is what iRacing will basically make you do anyway because if you haven't played iRacing before you're going to have a lower license level, level D or something like that. Um, but whilst it's not very good and the car's a bit all over the show, you can see I have now played iRacing on both the PlayStation 4 and an Xbox One controller so the answer to the question in the, in, in the title of this video is yes it does work as I say uh, I've said this already a couple of times sorry to repeat myself but there's gonna be some setup um, that you're gonna have to get right to to make these effective and uh, the next video I'm gonna do I'm gonna try and figure out if it's viable we know it works now and there's that's gonna be enough for some determined people who just jump in and have a crack anyway um, but I'm going to see if I can get myself to a point where I'm semi-competitive and maybe even able to do a race. There is some AI in iRacing. Uh, hopefully you got something out of this video. So if you did and you did enjoy it, please 
do hit that thumbs up. I hate asking, but if we don't, um, we don't get it. So, um, yeah, that's going to be it. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I look forward to talking to you in the next one. But for now, it's goodbye. <laughs>